It's a love story, but it's a love story set against the backdrop of the road from revenge to redemption. It's a love triangle between a woman, a father, and her lover, but it doesn't start out that way. It starts out basically with a situation where you have Sarah, who's the strong female character, and Midnight, who's the, uh, our hero. Midnight doesn't know who Sarah is behind her mask. Sarah knows who Midnight is behind her mask, and he, she's blackmailing him into helping her track down and find the guy that she believes is responsible for the death of her mother. The guy they're after is in fact Sarah's father, but he doesn't know he's got a daughter. There's a guy called Raxton, he used to be a former government sanctioned man who's risen through the ranks to the point where he now has direct lines of communication to heads of government, heads of crime cartels, and his call is feared by everyone. It's always about uh, uh, being storyboards for the little director inside your head. So you'd see a panel and your imagination would kick in and it would just transport you to a whole other world. They were my friends when I was growing up. And uh, to this day I feel that comics, uh, or rather sequential art, whether it's a comic or a graphic novel, is still that same portal to transport you away to another world if you've had a bad day at school, or a bad day at work, or a row with your wife, or a row with your husband, whatever it is. And for me, that, that was really the, the motivation for me wanting to have Tales of Midnight. Having had the comic shop, I know how difficult it is for an independent publisher to maintain distribution for a new title. It's very difficult. There, there, there is only really one major distributor for comic books in the world, and that's a company called Diamond Distribution. And they play very simple. At the end of the day, if your book is a big seller from day one, they'll stock it, they'll distribute it, and they'll make it accessible to the masses. If, on the other hand, it's a new title, it's taking its time to get awareness and become established, um, as a distributor, they're not in the business of supporting new independent titles to that level to keep carrying it month in, month out, irrespective of whether or not it's got the sales. And knowing this, I thought, well, I really want to tell the story about these characters and tells them. Um, and I self-published the comic to begin with myself in the shop, and it sold out, which was great. But I knew that even though it sold out in a relatively limited run, it wasn't enough to really um, make a distribution company like Diamond get behind it and keep behind it month after month. So I decided the best thing to do was to try and create an awareness and a demand for it outside of the comic industry through a licensing campaign to try and get companies interested in the characters, um, either through their imagery or through the story, uh, and ask companies if they've been producing products which would create brand awareness for the characters and the property ahead of the comic book being published through the comic industry. We've got um, these fantastic things. These are desktop calendars. You can peel the character off and put it on your exercise book, your lunchbox, collectible sketchbooks, limited edition prints, trading cards, greeting cards, and of course the uh, a whole bunch of stuff.